Good morning, Ohamnia or Konnia, everybody, whatever, whatever time it is where you are. Hello, hello. I'm starting off with the whispering and cozy noises right away today. Um, I'm probably going to avoid um, greeting everyone today so that people who um, watch the VOD um, can just relax and don't have to sit through too much um, greeting and, you know, rigmarole and stuff like that. <laughs> um, do you guys, does everything sound okay so far? This is an audio test. Audio test. Is everything okay? Um, I have a, um, I have a kind of foamy, foamy type of filter, uh, over my Blue Yeti at the moment. Uh, so if anything sounds strange, uh, please just let me know. Hopefully it doesn't, and that re reduces any kind of, um, plosive sounds that you may hear. So hopefully it sounds okay. Yeah, I have it set to audio, to stereo audio as well. Um, my face might do a couple of strange things today because I had to prop my microphone in a place where I wouldn't normally put it, you guys. So, uh, just please be aware of that. Um, but if everything sounds good, oh, Mia, thank you so much for coming. This is Tsundaria Gen 3, Tsun Dreams, Dreamweaving Spider Mama. Thank you so much for, oh, Amia Aranya, that's my name. <laughs> I almost forgot. Thank you so much for coming. Any donations and super chats I get today, um, will be read, um, on Monday upon my return. Um, so please do, uh, remind me on Monday, you guys, um, to go over any donations and things like that. Give me a, um, one moment. I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm actually going to adjust where my, um, my camera is one moment. Is good at math, you can tell. 
tell me exactly how many years ago that was because I'm not good at math. <laughs> Let me think. I'm having a difficult time. 33, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a, it's a long time ago, so um, I looked through this issue a bit and I thought it looked kind of interesting, so I thought uh, we could look through it together. As you can see, this one has a TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a uh, huge 10-page feature. <laughs> huge 10-page feature. Ninja Gaiden Part 2 review. <laughs> and um, lots of other things. Oh, and more hot previews. I can't wait for the... I can't wait for the hot previews. Okay, sorry. Apologies, you guys, if you can hear any mouth noises. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do, I will turn to the first page here. Hopefully I can do this properly. Oh, hold on. There we go. So what we have here is the Captain Nintendo phone number. Uh, you guys, please do not attempt to um, call this phone number, okay? This is a, a defunct phone number. It does not exist. It does not exist, okay? But it, this is Captain Nintendo. So what can Captain Nintendo do for you? You might be wondering. <laughs> well, it appears he has a new 900 number. Call it for the latest news, strategies, and tips of the week, 24 hours a day. The message runs about two minutes and changes every Sunday morning. Uh, a call to Captain Nintendo is a dollar fifty for the most powerful information you can get. Does anyone know what that is in, in current day inflation? A dollar fifty in nineteen eighty nine. I'm interested in knowing what that is. But I don't wanna look it up because I don't wanna have to click and things like that. <laughs> no, I didn't try calling it, but come on you guys. This is thirty three years ago. There's no way Captain Nintendo is still going to be up in action. What is he going to tell us about? What is he going to tell us about anyway? Like, the latest Sonic game. <laughs> about 325. Okay, so for about 325, you can, you can listen to a two-minute recording of the hottest tips of the week. A weird spider lady picked up. That's impossible. That's impossible. I am. was not Captain Nintendo, okay? And also, an actual person doesn't pick up. It's just a recording, I believe. So it says, you might even share the tips around to keep your buddy's phone bills down. Oh my goodness, they're advocating for, um, they're advocating for Captain Nintendo piracy. So what you're gonna do is you're going to, I would imagine, use your, um, answering machine or something like that to record your call. I'm not really sure how that sort of thing works. But you could use your answering machine to uh, record your call. <laughs> and then you can share the recording around with your friends in the schoolyard, perhaps. Perhaps sell it um, on tape for, you know, how, how much does it cost? A dollar fifty. So you could, you could perhaps um, sell it to your schoolyard friends for two dollars a piece. Plus the the cost of a blank tape. And you can make quite a uh, hearty profit off of such a thing back in the day. This is what I imagine uh, school children would be doing in 1989. <laughs> to try and make a little bit of extra cash. But I don't know. I wonder if that many of her friends play video games. Or you could tell your friends what you heard. But they would still have to pay for that. Yeah, that's probably a much better idea. <laughs> um, so it says, Either way, it's a powerful connection. The only official line to tips from the powerhouse, Nintendo. <laughs> a hot tip from Captain Nintendo. Remember to get permission to call from whomever pays the bill. And these three kids, we have them all crowded around the phone, listening to the... Captain Nintendo Hot Tips. 
Once again, everybody, I do not advocate calling this phone number. <laughs> I do not advocate calling the phone number. Yes, exactly. The Captain Nintendo grind said you must, we must create a business off of a Captain Nintendo phone number. Now that I have been reading for a little bit, uh, if you guys would let me know on how things are, fe uh, how you're feeling so far. How you're enjoying things so far. Um, how the sound is. Um, please let me know, okay? Because I want it to be very, very comfortable for you guys. <coughs> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. <laughs> you're enjoying it? Okay, perfect, perfect. Now what does this say here? Oh. This issue kicks off with a 10-page feature on the hottest hardbacks ever to shell out trouble. For street tough bad guys. Okay, now this is this is about our this is about our turtles. Oh, uh, you know Leonardo, uh, Donatello. <laughs> um, who else is there? Raphael and Michelangelo, of course, of course. Um, our boys, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're smart. They're skilled. They're skyrocketing to the top of the video game charts. That makes sense. Very, very nice, um, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> very nice Ninja Turtle video games back in the day. Very difficult, but very enjoyable. The Adventures of a Brave and Lonely Ninja. Out to Avenge the Murder of His Father. Continue in Part 2 of our Ninja Guide in Review. Okay, so we have basically a special on not only the Ninja Turtles, but, uh, Ninja Gaiden is involved in this as well. So it's basically... It's all ninjas all the time for this issue of Nintendo Power. <laughs> um, wait until you see what this guy is up against this time around. Check out the special Life Force maps that help you guide, help guide you through the galaxy. Uh, as we know, this is, or maybe you don't know, this is a, um, a shmup Life Force. Um, I, I think what I recall about Life Force is... You're kind of, you're flying through space, but the, the, the stages are changing as you're kind of flying through the stage. So there will be like growths coming out of the, the walls. Very, very strange. Um, very difficult. I had a very difficult time with it, um, trying to handle the, the, the changing stages. Um, so make that, take, a, take that what you will. I was not very good at that game, but uh, a very famous game that I think a lot of people enjoy. Yes, precisely. It's a uh, it's a ninja special, so I have to I have to whisper. I have to be very very sneaky. Oh, originally called Salamander. That's fascinating. So they have maps for that, and then some stuff about Bayou Billy. Um, the eagerly awaited results of the Nestor Awards. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to see what the Nestor Awards have in store. <laughs> I wonder what game's gonna win. Find out how the votes tallied up in our eight hot categories. <laughs> Nintendo Power fans are behind our new preview so section 100%. And this one is better than ever. We'll give you a look at Dragon Warrior and Mega Man 2. Check out the poster. Oh my goodness, there's a poster included in this issue. Fester's Quest, Clash at Demon Head, and Faxanadu. <laughs> oh, and there's some Father's Day gift reviews. So we have, if you're stuck for a better idea than soap on a rope for Father's Day, check out Nestor's special gift review. Professor Nestor has compiled the statistics of what dads want versus what dads get. It's an eye-opener. Ooh, I have a feeling that this is going to be some kind of, um, some kind of joke article, but we will see. Not soup on a rope, soap on a rope. Soap on a rope is simply um, a bar of soap that has um, a rope embedded inside of it so that you can put the soap on your wrist while you're in the shower and uh, it makes it a little bit easier to use. That is my understanding at least. <laughs> Yes, lots of hot tips. They really like the word uh, hot in 1989. Okay, so let's turn the page. Does anyone else have to lick their finger every time they, they turn a magazine or a book page? I know it's a little bit disgusting, but that's, that's something that I do. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, it could perhaps be to hang it up, or so you don't drop it on the floor. And then you have to bend over. 
bend over to grab it and you don't want to slip and fall, obviously, so it's very important to be on a rope for that reason. All right, let's turn the page. All right, and here we have our table of contents. You know, we'll probably just skim over some of the game guides and game reviews. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to Howard and Nestor in Counselor's Corner, as well as Friends. <laughs> and Nintendo Power Critics, as well as the Father's Day special and classified information. Uh, but we will certainly take a brief look at the previews and the guides as well. Okay, so here is the mailbox. Now, this is very, very interesting to me. I have to assume that this is, um, yes, so this appears to be people writing in via mail to the Nintendo Power magazine. And I'm not sure if they would send you anything in return, or if your reward is just sort of being able to have your name in Nintendo Power. And be on the, um, you know, be, be the talk of the schoolyard, be the coolest amongst all your friends. To have your name in the Nintendo Power magazine. Exactly, it's about clout. So, <laughs> let's read some of these, okay? And yes, gourmets. Four of us got together and made a magazine called Nintendo News for a school project. Wow, these guys are a bunch of nerds. <laughs> We thought NES fans would enjoy the following recipe that we included. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute for a moment. This recipe is pretty funny. <laughs> okay, for Mike Tyson's punch, you must, uh, put... <laughs> two cups of strawberry Kool-Aid. Two cups of raspberry Kool-Aid, two cups of ginger ale, and one box of frozen strawberries. So, <laughs> I don't want you guys to hear. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, I won't mute. I won't mute. I'll only mute if I need to um, clear my throat or something. Okay. My suspicion is that um, the children. They must have grabbed one of their, um, parents, um, recipe books and got their mom's help with this and changed some of the ingredients with Kool-Aid because that sounds incredibly sugary. Unless it's the type of Kool-Aid that doesn't have sugar in it, you know? So, uh, a very delicious sounding punch, and you can tell it's meant to be a punch, um, put in a bowl because of the frozen strawberries. Everybody knows that the frozen strawberries um, in or frozen fruit in any kind of a punch situation is meant simply for uh, decoration and nothing else. <laughs> it makes 12 four ounce servings. Mix both flavors of Kool-Aid and ginger ale, add the strawberries, chill for at least 30 minutes before serving. And we've included every single person's name in this, uh, who was involved in the Mike Tyson's punch, um, situation. <laughs> you eat them afterwards? I don't like eating them afterwards, because they get very, very soggy. Um, but perhaps next time I have punch, I might give it a try. Do you guys recommend that? <laughs> yes, it, it's precisely a beverage for children. Okay, uh, so that was... Vince Anderson, Jeff Baer, Adam Davidson, Jim Dush from Freeport, Illinois. Really makes you wonder what these kids are up to nowadays. Um, I imagine they were probably around 10 years old in 89, so they're probably uh, 43 years old at the moment. So, very, very fascinating. If I had, um, if I had done a enough preparation, I would have certainly made this punch and give it a taste test and let you guys know exactly what it tastes like, but I'm sure it's just very, very, very sugary. <laughs> what if one of them was watching? Um, they must, they must out themselves to me immediately. <laughs> Why 
why not do it now? Because I don't have to, I don't have strawberry Kool-Aid or raspberry Kool-Aid or ginger ale or frozen strawberries. I don't have any of those things. Oh, you're all of those people. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Delicious, guys. Remember to have an adult supervise in the kitchen if you've never tried your hand at putting a recipe together before. Cheers. So yes, you definitely um, would need adult supervision to make this recipe because, um, you know, the things that you would need an adult, uh, adult supervision for, such as cutting things with a knife, using an oven, um, everybody knows, based on just reading this recipe just now, that those are all things that are involved in this recipe. Um, and a kid could hurt themselves if they tried to use an oven by themselves while they were uh, trying to make this sponge, which very obviously requires an oven and dangerous tools like knives. So uh, it's a good thing that they included that warning. Perhaps someone, someone, could, someone could drown. That's, that's exactly, precisely the problem. Will I supervise you guys? Of course I'll supervise you guys while you make the Mice Dyson sponge. Do you guys all want to try making it together? <laughs> you guys are all going to try making the Mike Dyson sponge together? Uh, just don't spike the punch, okay? I can't have you guys getting, getting drunk. That would be just too, too rowdy. There's too many of you to handle. <laughs> does that mean? It's a deaf rap. I don't know. Oh, uh, here. Let's see. This, this person is a Super Mario Brothers fan. The graphics in Super Mario Brothers 2 are some of the best ever by Nintendo. He doesn't know. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that, um, it's, it, it's Doki Doki Pan. <laughs> Sometimes the 
enemies in the game even help you get through tough spots like World 4-6. <laughs> but the ending is the best thing about this game. Will you ever release Super Mario Bros. 3? From a lyric, Isisuri Irisuri, Brooklyn, New York. Super Mario Brothers 2 doesn't even have a world for a six. Well, maybe you're wrong about that. I think you're I think you're incorrect. I think this child is the correct one. Okay, you guys. The response is We're glad you enjoyed Super Mario Brothers 2. We are, in fact, producing Super Mario Brothers 3 for Nintendo's Play Choice 10 system late this summer. At the time, there are no immediate plans to release it for use with the NES. But keep your eye on Nintendo Power for updates. Does anybody know what the Nintendo Play Choice 10 system is? This is my first time hearing of such a thing. Right, this is before the release of Super Mario Bros. 2. Exactly. Oh, he means, he means worlds 4 through 6. I see, I see. Oh, an arcade machine with NES games in it. Interesting. That's very fascinating. So I guess Super Mario Bros. 3 was on that first. If it was on Game Center CX, I've never seen that episode, but I would love to. You guys, I wish we could somehow do a Game Center CX watch along together. I would, I would love that very much. I don't think it's possible, though. Wizard watch along. Maybe, perhaps, that might be possible. I've actually never seen the wizard. Okay, so next we have one called Metal Gear Comedian. Metal Gear is the best. Metal Gear is very, very good. I agree, sir. I don't know about the NES game, which is probably what he's talking about. But, um, Metal Gear Solid. Um, every time I play it, oh, he said it has realistic graphics, imagine that, imagine that. <laughs> every time I play it, I look forward to new levels, weapons, and equipment, such as a bomb blast suit, and a remote control missile. To fake an enemy out, a good tip would be to use an enemy uniform, but the most interesting thing in the game to me is a cardboard box that you can hide in. He's just like me. <laughs> He's just like me. <laughs> While hiding, watch for an enemy to pass by. Then, pow. He's gone. If you like action, I suggest you get Metal Gear. From Andrew Finnegan. Tacoma, Washington. P.S. I have a riddle. What do an expert golfer and double dragon have in common? They both have low bars. Low bars. Thank you so much, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks for your comments about Metal Gear and the joke, Andrew. Thank you so much, Andrew. We appreciate your contribution. Uh, it was. It, I don't. I don't get it either. It was. A, it was an awful, awful. another Andrew. There's too many Andrews in this, in this edition of Mailbox. Um, oh, apparently this is volume six. So the sixth volume. Okay, next we have compliments galore. I am a regular caller to your game counselors, and I'm incredibly impressed with the way they treat callers. In over a year of seeking their assistance, I have always found them to be friendly, knowledgeable, professional, kind, and very patient, no matter how simple a question may seem. Considering the stress involved in such a job, I cannot recommend you enough 
for assembling such a sterling staff of people to deal with your public on the front lines. As for Nintendo Power, I'd like to offer congratulations on an outstanding magazine. It's an excellent publication, well illustrated and written. The game reviews are especially helpful, as they are very well thought out. Thank you, and I wish Nintendo continued success and good fortune in the future. Well, isn't that sweet? That is certainly a very wholesome message. And Nintendo certainly did have a lot of success in the future, so I like to think Catherine Kiafi is uh, single-handedly responsible for this. From Naperville, Illinois. Wow, the second person writing in from Illinois. Amazing. Compliments galore for Ami Wen. Um, hopefully never, because I'll just simply die. <laughs> I'll just simply, um, pass away. I'll pass away, and you guys don't want that, do you? I don't think you want that, so there'll be no compliments galore. And the response is, Thank you for the kind words, Catherine. We're glad that you're enjoying NES products, and that the gameplay counselors are such a valuable asset to you. If any of you are having trouble with gameplay, our counselors would be happy to help you. Just call this number that I won't read. <laughs> but remember to keep your eye on the meter, especially if you're not paying the bill. <laughs> no, stop. We're continuing on with the Nintendo Power reading. Fantastic NES artist. Hi. I'm a beginning cartoonist and commercial artist who loves Nintendo games. I even started my own series of comic books of which Nintendo has been a valuable source of inspiration. To show my gratitude, I've drawn some Legends of Zelda characters. Thanks again. From Matt Bolzon, New Brighton. Is this... It's Minnesota, right? Not Maine. I think it's Minnesota. From Minnesota. <laughs> it's not from Minnesota. The, the person who wrote the letter is just from Minnesota. Wait, are you serious? That's the lead artist at Way Forward. He did Shante. Oh my goodness, did you guys actually know that this person... Wow! Did you know that this person actually wrote a Nintendo Power before? That is adorable. Oh my god, we're uncovering history today. <laughs> this is what we do here, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, you can see his art below. Very, very, very neat, very vibrant, um, and very colorful. So, uh, an excellent job, who, a person who went out to do excellent things. That's really, really cool. I'm glad you guys pointed that out because I would have never known. <laughs> Very impressive work, Matt. We have noticed that many of our fans are artistically inclined and want to thank all of you for sharing your work with us. That's so cute. That means he must have sent it in to, um, he must have sent the physical drawing in to Nintendo Power. And <laughs> this is making me want to cry right I'm just thinking of this small child who is like so, or maybe he might not be a small child because it said he was a commercial artist, but he was so inspired by Nintendo that he took one of his valued drawings that he spent a lot of time on and he sent that into Nintendo Power and it's just, a, it's just a really, really wholesome very, very wholesome moment. I love that. Maybe he could have made a copy of it, but I like to think he sent the original, the original drawing. <laughs> That's so sweet. And then we have Sequel Madness. I have just purchased the most thrilling game ever. <laughs> Zelda 2, The Adventure. 
Adventures of Link. The game is filled with very impressive graphics, music, and strategy. I would recommend Zelda 2 to everyone who owns an NES. Wow, he thinks Zelda 2 is the best thing ever. Wait until one day he inevitably plays um, A Link to the Past. His mind is going to be simply blown. <laughs> oh, he was about to enter art college at the time. That's so sweet. Imagine, imagine him getting his words. His, uh, getting his work um, published in Nintendo Power magazine, and it's like, it's like exactly what he needs. It's exactly what he needs to happen to um, to kind of egg him on into you know going on and, and becoming someone who creates games. And as you know, in a previous stream, we kind of went over some of the. Um, some of the trials and tribulations of uh, Shantae getting released. So it's just really, really sweet to see that, you know, you guys follow, follow your dreams. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, follow your dreams, because uh, this person certainly came a long way. Um, they say, thank you, Andrew. Zelda 2, The Adventures of Blink has proved to be a true hit. Thanks to fans like you. Akira <laughs> Man, never give up on your dreams. And you know, it's never too late. It's never, it's never too late to start, um, to start something new. You know, you guys, if you want to draw, the only, the only time when it's too late is when it's actually too late. That's the only time it's ever too late to start something new. So, uh, I feel so inspired by this guy right now. <laughs> um, the next person asks, Any calendars left? <laughs> One of my friends subscribed to Nintendo Power before the September-October issues came out. And they got a calendar. Since I subscribed last December, I didn't get a calendar. And I was wondering if I could buy one now. Sorry, Wesley. <laughs> Sorry, Wesley. The Nintendo Insider's calendars were offered only to those who were early subscribers to Nintendo Power. But watch for your subscription renewal notice. There may be other special offerings for Nintendo Power fans. My apologies. <laughs> I muted to um to take a uh, sip of my water. No, no technical difficulties. Everything's great. Here, I'll do the turning page ASMR for you again. There we go. There we go. Do you guys want sippy ASMR? I feel like it's gonna be very loud. I can't hear anything except me swallowing up. There we go. <laughs> very refreshing, very refreshing. So now we have. It's it's good. You guys don't mind, okay? I'll take my next sip without muting. <laughs> so 
this is a very colorful and very uh, lovely uh, spread for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh no, they spelled Michelangelo's name wrong, did they? Oh, they did. They spelled it like Michael, like the name Michael. Poor Michelangelo. But you know, you know, who I'm interested in uh, learning about is Raphael. Oh, this, this little section is very difficult to read, but let's try. Ever since they were first mentioned in, what's that say? Backwatch a few months ago, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been a hot topic of conversation among NES players. We previewed the game in our last issue, and now we'll give you an in-depth look at the first three stages of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. NES style. <laughs> Donatello. Don is the strongest turtle, but he is also very slow. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Michelangelo. Mike's nun... What is it? Oh, I don't think they... I think they also misspelled nunchuck. Unless it's actually called nunchaku. Mike's nunchaku works well against the smaller enemies. Raphael. His sigh is the quickest weapon, but does not have a long range. And then finally, we have Leonardo. Leo's katana gives you a balance of offensive power and good mobility. And then they have an overview of some of the different areas in the game. Uh, such as Area 1, <laughs> Rescue April. As we all know, wears a banana raincoat. And then Area 3. The turtles return to find their apartment ransacked. And Master Splinter kidnapped by the Foot Clan. No rest for the weary. As the turtles spring into action. And then, of course, we have a lovely cartoon marker illustration of Master Splinter. Nunchaku is the standard spelling. I see, I see. Oh yeah, why don't they have any information about Area 2? 1, 3? Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Let's go on to the next page. I love the illustrations. It's, it's so colorful and I love that it's done with traditional, um, traditional Oh, there's area to save the dam. My apologies. <laughs> that was definitely my fault for missing that. Alright, let's go on over to the next page. Oh, we're going to learn about the Foot Clan. Alright, well, there's a giant frog. He's, he is quite adorable and lovely. I don't think I could even... I don't think I could ever come close to destroying the, um the giant frog in the game. He's very, very cute. It says, watch out for his tongue. <laughs> watch out for his tongue, you guys. He's gonna get ya. Then, fire freak. Well, that's not very nice, is it? To call someone a fire freak. Avoid the fire he spits. That's what you guys gotta do when I'm spitting bars, okay? You got to, um, <laughs> avoid the fire that I spit. Oh, I forgot to read this part. By utilizing the latest in scientific weaponry, Shredder has the evil Foot Clan on the verge of total world domination. And we have Robo next. It says, this robot is tough on dirt. This is the chainsaw maniac. His chainsaw is deadly. <laughs> then we have the mega turtle disguised. Oh no, at first glance, at first glance he appears to just be the, the other turtles, but then if you look closer, he turns into a yellow mega turtle who's even stronger. Then we have foot soldier, who is simply a fighting machine. And then, 
We have Shredder. What is this angle? Shredder, the evil leader of the Foot Clan, holds the secret to returning Splinter to human form. But Splinter can't be anything but a rat. That's what we know him as. It's very cool. <laughs> we can't have anything. We can't have him be anything but a rat. That's simply unex unacceptable. Okay, and we're not going to go through the, the guides for the different levels. But we can certainly look at the pretty pictures that they have. Uh, illustrations of the turtles. But let's turn the page, shall we? Oh, that's the party wagon, is it? Apparently that's the party wagon. <laughs> <laughs> All of this in great gas mileage, too. Wow. That's amazing. I would love to take a ride on that. The turtles return home to find that Master Splinter has been kidnapped. To find him, the turtles will have to equip their party wagon with missiles and blow up the barricades that divide the city. Oh, it runs on pizza, doesn't it? <laughs> The story behind the wagon is it's a van they stole from Baxter. I don't know who Baxter is. <laughs> um, and then more pretty pictures we have. Um, what is he eating there? Pizza? Is that pizza? Oh, I like how they have a guide about that one difficult jump. Um, that, um, you know... It, um, the nerd complained about in that one AVG at episode. <laughs> Do you see, um, on the, um, on the, on the right page, in the middle, next to the missiles header, it says, place your turtle between, place your turtle below the opening at this spot to jump. At this point, push up and left with the controller. With lots of practice, your turtle will land on his feet. And then you can simply walk across the gap. <laughs> they didn't even, they don't even know the best strategy for their own game. <laughs> yeah, I need another sip of water, hold on. Excuse me. Okay. Let's move on to the next page. So I think this, there's going to be ten pages of turtles. Stuff. So, um, it's 10 pages of turtle stuff, so we might have a while to go before we're out of the turtle woods, so to speak. Yep, here we go. So, um, your, your comrades are captured. He's saying, hurry up, guys. I would not like to be tied in this rope any longer. Please, please, please release me is what he's saying. I don't know. I don't know how else to narrate these. And then, it is a good idea to power up all four turtles and have over 40 scrolls before braving the sewers. So you must grind. There's a little bit of grinding that you have to do. Uh, so, yeah, in this game, it appears that you must grind to, to be able to continue on and defeat without the, the levels without having too much trouble. All right, let's move on to the next page. Oh my goodness, this is quite the detailed guide. <laughs> they have lots and lots and lots of information. Oh, but looks like at the end of it, they found Master Splinter. As you can see, it says, Master, we found you. <laughs> Spoilers for the game, what if Master Splinter was actually going to die? We would have never known. And then it says, even though you finished the first three areas, Shredder and his evil folk clan aren't beaten yet. Here's a quick look at what still awaits you. Underrated game. Is it a good game? I've heard that the I heard that the NES um Ninja Turtle games are quite good, but very challenging. You want a ginger ale? You should make Mike Tyson's punch. <laughs> Alright, let's turn the page. 
Oh, and now we're on to the Nintendo Power Awards. We have um, the Nestor Awards for 88. So this is for the previous year, actually. This, um, this is the previous year's Nintendo Awards. So I'm very, very interested in seeing uh, the announcer saying, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Nintendo Power Awards, 1988. And here's our boy Nestor, who I'm sure you all know and love, says, Welcome to the first annual Nintendo Power Awards, or Nestors, as we proudly call them. The purpose of the Nestors is to recognize special achievements in excellence in Nintendo Entertainment System games. Your votes are in, and the ballots have been tabulated, and the results have been safely stored in our titanium vault until this very moment. Very, very serious. Um, these, these awards are, we have to make sure there's no... Um, tampering going on. And now, without further ado, we proudly present the winners of the first annual Nesters. Best graphics and sound goes to Simon's Quest. I actually can agree with this. Um, Simon's Quest is a very, 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 very beautiful game. And the sound and music is also excellent despite how you feel about the gameplay. Which I find, I found to be, I like the concept of the game, but the gameplay I found to be a little bit of hit or miss. Um, but I think this is definitely a fair award for Simon's Quest to take home. And the, the announcer says, the best graphics and sound award goes to Simon's Quest. It's use of detailed foreboding backgrounds such as the mansions and graveyards and eerie music, combined to create a sense of mystery during the day and haunting suspense and danger of the night. I certainly agree with this. The best challenge award went to The Legend of Zelda, the first one. Interesting, I'm going to be interested to hear their, their explanation on this. It is certainly a challenge, I would say that. Standout winner for Best Challenge is The Legend of Zelda, famous for its Lost Woods, Labyrinth Monsters, and the Diabolical Ganon. After the problem-solving mysteries and rigorous hazards, players are presented with even more challenges in the second quest. Oh, there's a second quest in the game. I actually, I actually was not aware of that. That's good to know. So you can play through it a second time with more difficulty, I think. Um, and then, best theme fun. What does this mean? Best theme fun. What is, what is this kind of award? Thank you guys once again for the donations. I'll make sure I go over them on Monday, but that I really appreciate that. Uh, so it says... The landslide winner is Super Mario Bros. 2, with its many imaginative wor worlds of exotic creatures, such as living bombs and bizarre birds. The story of the simple plumber saving the world of dreams has found a home in the hearts of players, young and old alike. I agree, that's a very, very nice game. I'm just not sure what best theme, best theme fun means. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that, but um, I think it certainly deserves a reward. Then best play control. This is also very fair, I think. Um, I think this game has excellent controls. Um, and you can even choose a character that suits your play style best. Like if you want something that's a little bit easier, uh, you can choose Princess Peach. Um, if you like your jumps to be very floaty, And then Mario's kind of your all-rounder. So it says, Once again, the winner is Super Mario Bros. 2. Gameplay control is so responsive that you'll almost feel you are the one 
on jumping from cloud to cloud. Whether jumping, lifting, or throwing, Super Mario Brothers 2 offers great variety of offers great variety in gameplay control with the four very different heroes. This is true, it has a lot of replay value. I would definitely agree with that. Wow, I'm agreeing with the rewards so far. Except for the one that I don't really understand. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. The best character, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. The runaway victor is Link. His friendly, boyish charm, endurance, and great courage creates a legendary quality that makes a lasting impact on us. Sharing so many adventures, a growing empathy for him gives us our link to his larger-than-life quests to save Princess Zelda. What a good boy he is. <laughs> what a good boy Link is. And then we have Best Ending, Super Mario Brothers 2. This game does have an excellent ending. But I feel like... I feel like Zelda and Super Mario Brothers 2 are very much dominating the competition. <laughs> Taking honors once again is Super Mario Brothers 2. Without giving away anything, we can say that the great graphics, character tallying feature, and surprise ending combine to make a satisfying, well-earned finale for the efforts of an industrious power player. A real hero's reward. I like that, um, they said they didn't want to give any, any spoilers about the ending. And in the previous page, they stated that, um, Mario is trying to save the dream world. God forbid we give anything away about the ending. <laughs> God forbid we give anything away about that, which we've just described on the previous page. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, plates. Interesting, interesting. Best pl player versus player. Plates of Steel. This is a hockey game. <laughs> this is a hockey game. It says... The allocates go to Blade of Steel. The intense action of an exciting ice hockey game really pumps up the adrenaline and maintains the player's involvement. Facing off, checking, and slap shots all serve to help a player perfect his skills of speed, dexterity, and strategy. Well, I've never played this game, so I, I certainly wouldn't be able to comment on that. Nice. Status update. Okay, please let me know whether you're still enjoying yourselves. Um, if there's anything you'd like changed, if you're still feeling relaxed, okay? I want to make sure you guys are, um, I want to make sure this is the best experience for you. And that you're all really, really comfy. Okay. <laughs> you are okay. What do we think about this? Is this too much? Making it look like a, like an old video team? <laughs> Are we at the too much nostalgia here? <laughs> it's too much. Okay, okay, I thought so. That's why I didn't have it on in the first place. <laughs>
Nintendo Power, so it's not that serious after all. <laughs> That's always been how awards work. Oh, fascinating. If the Oscars could do a short, you know, I don't, I don't watch the Oscars, so I'm not actually familiar with that. Um, so we have more about about it. This year's award for best overall. To Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. In just a short time, it has captured the hearts and imaginations of power players everywhere. Rich in story, theme, art, sound, gameplay, and composition, this epic quest has become a video game legend. It should be noted that the voting was very close in many categories. And all the nominees should feel very proud. Their efforts are recognized and appreciated by power players throughout the land. The land? The land of what? This is the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> you keep Princess Nolan's name out your mouth. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I can't believe, I can't believe Howard did that. <laughs> the land of Zelda. your hat. It's gonna be a rough ride. Now, is this supposed to be... So this is 1989. Um, is this supposed to be a Crocodile Dundee kind of situation, or or who who is this character supposed to be exactly? Sage one, keep a move on. There's gator country. This, this here's gator country. Oh no, you're gonna get eaten by a gator. Oh, it's a very difficult game. It appears to be a platform. Mm. It 
appears to be a platformer, but the background is... I can't tell if it's meant to be top-down or meant to be a side-scrolling experience. I honestly can't tell. <laughs> what is this supposed to, to look like? Oh, I can read the little blurb about it. Oh, every stage is a different genre. That's so interesting. Oh, that sounds really, really cool, actually. It's a shame that it's just too, too difficult. Um, so, it says... With gators in the water, eagles in the sky, and Gordon's men all around, a fella could get to thinking he ain't wanted around here. Still, there's gotta be a way to get through. If you still see water and it starts bubbling, you ain't found no hot tub. You're about to find a gator. Keep moving. Your hide ain't nothing but a meal to him. Gordon's men have the advantage of being armed with rocks and knives. But... It's not a big enough edge to stop Billy. A man enough to fight a gator is big enough to stop these guys. One good swift kick, and you'll knock an the item right out of the, go the goon's hands. Pick them up. Now it's your turn to show them how to use them. No bridge over these troubled waters. Keep your eyeballs peeled for frogmen hiding just beneath the surface of still ponds. The bulletproof vest and the gun are the strongest items, but don't forget the whip. A vest will help against one big, mean dude. Gordon left waiting for you. They'll throw you like a rag doll if you don't watch what you're doing. <laughs> Shrimps on the Barbie. Is, he, is, is this supposed to be an Australian uh, crocodile Dundee sort of character? Uh, you guys, I still have a little bit of my coffee left, so I'm going to take a sip of that, okay? Alright, I love the little, I love the animals on this page, but I especially love the little lizard in the upper, um, the upper right-hand corner. Look how bright and orange he is. That's so, so, so cute. I love him. I want to take him home, and I want to have him as my pet. <laughs> I think he's so cute. What kind of lizard is that, do you think? Could be... Doesn't look like a chameleon. Maybe a, a gecko of some kind. I'm not sure. I don't know. But he's very, very cute. And I would very much like to... To... Uh, pick him up and just take care of him. I'll give him a nice home where he's never going to get threatened or eaten by crocs or gators at any point. Are they gators or crocs? They're gators, they're alligators. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next page. We have an entire guide for Bayou Billy. Okay, so we're going to skip most of this. Um, illustrations. And actually you can see an example of the different, um, the variety to the different stages. So you have some, ooh, it looks like I see a reticle. I see a reticle on the, the, the screen there. So this appears to be maybe one of the light gun stages. Oh, and they even say, watch for the men hiding in the bushes. They ain't hunting. Wow, I feel like that is a, a direct, um, I think that's a direct call out to Duck Hunt on the NES, you know. Oh, why is he grabbing onto that? Now, buy you, Billy. Now, buy you, Billy. Why are you grabbing onto that monkey's tail? What did that monkey ever do to you? And buy you, Billy's eyes at the moment are just, they're just totally black with evil, evil intent, <laughs> as he's yanking on this mon monkey's tail. No, I don't like that. That makes me feel like he's a villain. He'll do anything to save his babe. He's gone too far this time. He's gone too far. 
The snake is very, very cute, however. <laughs> I like the snake. <laughs> and then stage three looks to be a... You know, that, that looks like it could perhaps be a beat-em-up. Um, and then we have stages four and five, which appear to be uh, a driving stage. Which is super cool. Now that's just a lot of variety in one game. Good for them. Good for them for making such a varied game. That must have been a lot of fun for people to play back in the day. The TV ad for Bite Billy is funny. You know what? If we ever do another uh, video game commercial watch along, please do remind me of that one. We check it out. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next page, you guys. Oh, Bourbon Street. Oh my goodness, we're in New Orleans. I see, so it's that kind of bayou. So we're not in Australia, but we're in fact in New Orleans. <laughs> yes, very bonkers for an NES game. We're in New Orleans, and he's in the streets of New Orleans. <laughs> Let's see here. Daddy said she can take out Gordon's men like taking out the trash. Wow. Oh no, that's not what it says. It says, remember what your daddy said. And you can take out Gordon's men like taking out the trash. And we have, again, the very, very colorful, colorful illustrations of, of animals that are so cute and add such, such a, a charming feature to these pages. Now, they did reuse the lizard illustration from earlier, but I suppose I can forgive that one. Uh, because the lizard has been my favorite of all the animals that they've shown so far. He's so cute. <laughs> okay, hold on. I need a drink. <laughs> oh, and there it says, on the left page, it says, This is the scene you don't want to see. It's the game over screen. Better luck next time. You know, I would imagine that many, many people saw that screen many, many times playing this game. Oh, and we have a Cobra Triangle. Now, I'm not especially familiar with Cobra Triangle. It says... More than a race, more than an obstacle course, and more than a fight to defeat gigantic sea monsters. Cobra Triangle is all of this in one exciting action game. Shore batteries surround you, whirlpools try to sink you, only your pilot skills can save you. Give it your best shot in this wave jumping, water spraying boat chase that will keep you entertained for hours on end. Check it out. Okay, so it looks like there's a number of power-ups. There's a turbo, which will make you go, um, be able to turn a little bit better, it seems. Then there's a rapid-fire ability. Then there's speed, which gives you some extra horsepower. My apologies uh, if you guys are able to hear that, um, motorcycle that just went by outside. Not the optimal experience, I realize, but, uh, uh hopefully it wasn't too loud for you. Uh, there's a missile, and there's force as well. Oh my goodness, you can use the force in this game. It's just like Star Wars. <laughs> um, it says a few seconds of invincibility to ease the rough spots. You didn't hear anything. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, not as interesting of a spread as some of the other games. Um, in terms of illustrations, but I do like the little boat they have in the corner there. <laughs> Alright. Oh, and here we have some more uh, guides about Cobra Triangle. Oh, and it looks like you defeat the Loch Ness Monster at some point in this game. Hmm. Oh my god, there's a crab. You guys, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> These are just pictures from the manual, so not that interesting. Oh, it's interesting to me, I think. 
you know, even if they didn't illustrate it, for, especially for the magazine, it's really, really nice to get to see such colorful pictures. And I think it's laid out in a really fun way. I like the, I like how they did the, um, the film strips as well to show the, the screenshots from the game. That's really, really nice. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Oh my goodness, life force. <laughs> so we have life force and we have the really cool illustration um, of like, I don't know, a robot space snake. I love this style of illustration. Uh, you know, the shading and the way they do the highlights and stuff. It's really, really cool. So this is certainly a really well laid out page. I really like the way they did. They have the, the, the smattering of space in the background. And um, they have planets as well. But this is, again, just kind of a game guide. Uh, walking you through the various stages. And giving you some tips. You know, I could actually use a guide like this for this game. Because... Um, I've tried to play it recently, and I didn't have much luck. I didn't have much luck. I, w I was very caught off guard by the, the, by the stages changing. Um, I feel like they changed, like, there would be things growing from the walls and things like that. And it was just, it always caught me off guard for some reason. Maybe I should come back to it with this, with this guide in hand. Giga is smiling like this is the best day of his life. I mean, look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> I really, really love the, the smiling skeleton. As you guys know, I think skeletons are very, very adorable. Uh, skeletons of any kind. <laughs> so, uh, a game, if a game has a skeleton in it, it's already a 10 out of 10. Well, it has to be, I would say it, has, it is limited to being a well-illustrated skeleton. If it's not a, a well-illustrated, detailed skeleton with a silly look on his face, then it's not as great. Did you get to the ancient Egyptian sarcophagus boss? You know what? I didn't even get to a single boss. Uh, I, I actually, I rage quit this game. <laughs> I rage quit this game. Yeah, he's, he's grinning. It's like he's going, yeah. A very difficult game, I think, so um, I would love to give it another try. But let's go on to the next page. Hopefully we don't have too much more game guides ahead of us. Alright, this is still for um, Life Force. Jeez, I had it muted to uh, clear my throat, but I was just saying that on the left hand, or on the right hand page, my apologies, um, I really like the way they pieced the, um, the screenshots of the stages together, and it gives you basically the full layout of all the stages, and I imagine this would have been very, very helpful uh, as someone, a younger person, um, trying to trying to complete these stages, even, not even just knowing what's about to come ahead, but just knowing h how much of the stage is left, things like that, I think that would have been very, very helpful. So I actually, if you are a true Nintendo Power player, if you're truly very, very interested in, um, trying a lot of different Nintendo games, I would imagine this would actually be a, u a useful subscription to get. Let's move on to the next page. Oh, what happened there? Oh, there's more, and then this one is extra long, so it looks like it... 
looks like it got scuffed somehow. Oh, it's a fold-out poster. I see, I see. So it's a fold-out poster, and that's why... <gasps> Here we go. You guys can see that, right? Look at that. I don't know if it's meant to be a poster or just a guide to the levels, but... I would certainly... I would certainly uh, cut this out of my magazine, and I would put this on my wall. This is very, very cool. I like that a lot. That's neat. That's so cool. I wonder if they had included other posters in this uh, in this scan because um, this appears to be in very good quality. And they mentioned a, a Mega Man. What was it? A Mega Man Two poster at some point. So I'm very, very interested in seeing if those are included. Because you know what, since, since it's a high quality scan, you could probably even, you know, you could get some of this stuff printed out maybe, if you really, really wanted to. <laughs> oh, I've zoomed in too far. There we go. The sideways text makes tons of sense because those levels scroll vertically, so you naturally turn them. Yes, exactly. That's very, very cool. <gasps> it's usually one or two posters. I think there's supposed to be a Mega Man 2 poster in this one, so let's see. Let's see if they have it. Oh, here's the Mega Man 2 poster. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> that's so cute, but it's making me think of, um... You guys know what the Mega Man, um, <laughs> the Mega Man box art looks like in North America, right? But imagine looking at the Mega Man box art and how they portray, um, the character of Mega Man and seeing this cutesy kind of over-the-top cartoonish anime illustrations. Um, for Mega Man 2 and thinking, thinking that they're maybe going to go in the, a different direction with the box art. And Mega Man 2's box art is just as insane <laughs> as the first one. <laughs> Imagine thinking that they were going to go in this direction with it. But this is cool, very colorful. Um, Dr. Wily is having a bit of an issue with his shoe, it appears. You can see right there, his shoe is coming apart for some reason. Um, quite disturbing, but we have all of the robot masters here. Um, so we have Airman and Woodman and uh, Metal Man. Oh, Metal Man is very, very hidden in the back there. You can just barely see Metal Man. <laughs> and then we have Quick Man. And then, uh, who the heck is that? Crash Man. And then Heat Man. And then we have Flash Man and Bubble Man. And then Guts Dozer in the back, as well as uh, Dr. Wily's Castle. And then a very neat in the upper, um, in the upper left hand corner, we have the, the uh, name of the game being exposed. Where the pages are ripped. I like this a lot. His toes are out, his toes are indeed out. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of seeing Dr. Wily's toes. I'm not sure if I enjoy that, but it's a choice they made. <laughs> okay. Zoom back out. I'm gonna take some water. Yeah, it seems to be very in line with the, um, with the original concept art. Um, but yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. Some One day you're just relaxing and hanging out and trying to read an issue of Nintendo Power and then you have to see Dr. Wily's toes. Don't know if I'm such a huge fan of that, but um, I think it's, it's gonna make me stronger in the end. <laughs> it's gonna make me a stronger person. All of you, all of you too. Okay, so very nice. This is a full-size scan of the poster. 
So if you were to actually want to print out this poster yourself, it looks like that's something you could certainly do. I, I won't be zooming in on his toes again, but um, that's very, very nice. I like that. <laughs> A larger picture of his dome. So much Nintendo power. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I like this a lot. I like this a lot. <laughs> so we have some uh, more lovely art. Uh, we have some more close ups um, of some of the art from the poster. Um. So this is not talking about just Mega Man 2, but Mega Man 2 is the main feature. This is about a couple of new, of new games. We're getting some previews for them. So it says, starting off the previous section of this issue is Capcom's hot new Mega Man 2. It features super sound, spectacular graphics, and great gameplay. You'll love it. I do indeed love this game. I would imagine that this won some awards in the next year's, um, uh, Nintendo Awards. So it says, Keep within the contorted catacombs of Skull Castle. A sinister plot is being hatched. A plot by those... But a plot whose evil could only be devised by one man. The insidious Dr. Wily. <clears throat> what terrible schemes has Dr. Wily devised in his secret underground lab? <gasps> Oh my goodness, he's so evil. And here's the five new titles they're gonna talk about. There's Mega Man 2, Faxanadu, Uncle Fester's Quest, Clash of Demon Head, and Dragon Warrior. And you can see Dr. Wily down below going, hehe, <laughs> as, um, ooh. You guys, look at the bottom illustration. Um, the top, the top left-hand corner of the bottom illustration. Do you see that? What appears to be a, um, a bottle of poison has been knocked over. And there appears to be, um, poisonous fumes filling the room. Interesting. <laughs> I have a feeling, I get the feeling that although Dr. White is a bit of an evil genius, uh, all in all, he doesn't seem to be too, too smart, does he? Um, but here he is looking at all his eight robot masters, and he is standing on a box of carrot bombs. Also, it's probably not a great idea. And he has a, um, an NES as well. Every, every supervillain's, um, most important tool is having an NES at their disposal. Oh, he also has a VCR, and, um, some different VHS tapes. I wonder what's on those. <laughs> Guys, what do you think is on, um, what do you think is on Dr. Wiley's, uh, VHS tapes that he's got there? Perhaps some home movies? Filming his robots having lots of fun? <laughs> is that why I have an NES? No, I'm just a collector. That's why I have an NES. I'm just a retro game collector. <clears throat> his home videos, that's very possible. VHS tapes of his robots growing up. I like to think that that's what it is. <laughs> tapes of his robots having, you know, lovely childhood moments. Oh my god, Klaus, I don't see that. <laughs> okay, we must, we must move on. Some more very cute illustrations here. Dr. W. <laughs> um, it says, the corridors of Flashman's icy den will cause intruders to lose control. I assume they mean lose control of their footing and, and not um, just like go totally crazy and lose control of their entire body. But in fact, I know 
know that that's what it means because I've played this game before. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> One touch of these force beam spells. Doom for intruders and quick man slayer. That is certainly true now. Now that is a helpful is a helpful episode or, or a helpful level to have a guide for. Um, because you guys know I struggled a little bit with the um with the beams in quick man stage. Uh, because they do kill you instantly. Uh, and having a guide to know what's ahead for that would actually be very, very helpful. And then over here it says, From the twisted genius of Dr. Wiley springs an army of automated abominations. And they're waiting for you. And then he says, No one can laugh at me now. Oh no. Did Dr. Wiley become this way because he was bullied? <laughs> Everything is starting to make sense, so it turns out that Dr. Wiley uh, was bullied for being probably being a little bit of a nerd, let's be honest. And um, now no one's going to be able to laugh at him because he's going to be taking over the world, I suppose. Now, you know what would help? Um, as a guide for, for this game, would be telling you which order to do the... Uh, robot masters in. I feel like that would be very, very helpful. Uh, so maybe, but you know, this is just a preview of the game, so it's very possible that they do that in a later issue. They would tell you what order to do the robot masters in. All right, let's go on to the next page. <laughs> Mega Man looks incredibly goofy here. <laughs> He's got a very, very chubby face. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it says, what? No, not you. <laughs> Hiya, Doc. I heard about what you're up to, and I decided to pay you and your goons a little visit. See you soon. <laughs> Go ahead. Your defeat will be frosting on the cake of victory. He's definitely been eating some beans. Yeah, he looks like um bum. <laughs> <laughs> Will Dr. Wiley succeed with his plans for world conquest? I think not. Will Mega Man be able to face the devastating power of the Wily Force? Find out. Maybe. Maybe not. If you can beat the game, you'll find out. <laughs> looks like Mega Man will <laughs> eat the game. Yeah, he probably has some cake himself, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, and then the next game is Faxanadu. Now, I don't really know anything about Faxanadu, to be honest, but I've definitely heard the name of the game. Uh, yeah, Nintendo Power, that's what we're reading. It says, Fire in the mist shrouded past, the elven town of Aeolus enjoyed a peaceful existence under the shade of a magical world tree. One day, their woodland surroundings were suddenly shattered when a shower of meteorites hit the world tree. The demon king, who was hibernating deep in the underworld, awoke from his slumber. He sent his evil minions to the earth's surface, where they s caused havoc and destruction. The life-giving elven fountains began drying up. To restore peace to the world, a perilous quest through the gigantic world tree must be made. Armed with courage and youthful vigor, you have been chosen as the hero to make this dangerous journey. It has good music? Oh. <laughs> I like the illustration too. Another one that's possibly from the manual, but it's very, very nice looking. It was quite tough. Is it an, it's an RPG? Okay, that's what I thought. Let's see if there's any previews on it on the next page. I'm very curious. <laughs> are these... Are these screenshots of the in-game? Um, <laughs> are these screenshots of the in-game character sprite? Don't 
post pictures of us? No, no, you guys are very, very, you guys are, uh, very handsome, okay? You don't look anything like these guys, don't worry. I love the guy on the top right who's wearing, like, a blue, uh, wife beater or something like that. And also the key shot man who appears to be, uh, smoking a cigarette. And these illustrations, okay, these ones are probably from the manual. But they're very, very, very charming. Very charming little illustrations. Um, of some different items and power-ups in the game. Very cute. I love the way they put these pages together. <laughs> Your face is only 8 pixels wide. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're still all very beautiful and handsome, okay? <laughs> Oh, and here is Chester's quest. Oh my goodness, they have a little, um, they have a little, um, music score for the Adams Family theme. <laughs> Let's sing it, okay? I'm gonna try and sing it as quietly as possible. They're creepy and they're cookie, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adams Family. Da 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 da. 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 There we go. <laughs> the title theme recreation was awesome. Shame about the rest of this game. Yeah, so I actually watched. Oh, look at the graphic, by the way, of Fester in front of the city. That's actually, that's actually a really, really nice looking graphic for, um. A really nice looking graphic for an NES game. Their house is a museum, where people come to see him. They really are a scream, the Adams Family. <laughs> I don't actually know the full Adams Family song. I, I never really watched Adams Family, to be honest. I think I might have seen one of the movies, but... So yeah, I have watched um, a playthrough of this game. <laughs> and there is, there is one specific... Uh, bullet power up where your um your bullets move around in circles but that's only one power up there's actually there's actually many different power ups um that make the game a lot easier to play but uh, you have to be careful to only get the ones with the power ups that don't you know circle around your enemies because <laughs> those can be very very um difficult to use but we have a cute little illustration of a little chippy fester uh, it says, Wacky Uncle Fester. The old TV series, The Adams Family, is headed your way in a bizarre quest. He's trying to stop an invasion of weird aliens out to conquer the Earth, starting with Uncle Fester's neighborhood. On hand are some cool background graphics and a happening soundtrack, along with the zany Adams Family characters. Well, you should show me some of the Adams Family characters. Oh, down here it says, Find family support. Fester will have to search the city to find his unique family. He'll need the special items that only they can give him. So I guess you do see a little bit of uh, the family in there. <gasps> very, very cute. Nice of them to provide sheet music. What am I supposed to do with that? I'm curious if that's even correct. They're creepy. They're creepy. They're... It appears to be correct, actually. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It does appear to be the correct sheet music, so fascinating. Picture in the bottom left is Peak Sunsoft graphics. It's very, very, very beautiful. Uh, you know, some of these games, uh, even if they aren't the best to play, um, they do have little hidden, uh, nice, hidden nice, uh, things about them, like, like, like some cutscene graphics and things like that. <laughs> It looks right to you. Yeah, it is. It is correct. It actually is correct. <laughs> That's very funny. Sometimes you see, sometimes you see, um, you know, around Christmas time, if you go to, um, you know, like a home goods store or something, sometimes you'll see things with sheet music on them that are supposed to be the sheet music for, for, you know, Merry, uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas or something like that. And you actually read them and it's like, this is not we wish you a Merry Christmas. This is something entirely different. <laughs> so I'm glad they didn't do that for Nintendo Power. 
Nintendo power is in the upper echelon of uh, entertainment, they wouldn't they wouldn't possibly lead us astray. All right, we're going to move on to the next page. Oh, and here we have Clash at Demon Head. So, is this the one? Okay. This is the one that has the dragon flipping the bird. <laughs> Let's take a look. Okay. Look at him. He's flipping the bird. <laughs> Why is he doing that? Why would they put that in the game? That's actually what he's doing, isn't it? He only has three fingers. That's incredibly rude. Sir, behave yourself. But otherwise, we have um, a, a neat illustration of two of the characters. This is a nice illustration. Very, very, very eight. I really like that. <laughs> I don't know how they got away with it. Somebody probably just didn't notice. Uh, it says, Vic Tokai casts a long arm into the future and pulls back a winner. Um, so there's a lot of stuff about the story. I'm not going to read all of this, but I do want to take a look at the monsters because they're cute. We have Tom Gaikot, who it's a little bit difficult to read. But it says he's a lawbreaker who appears more than once in the game. Somewhere he has hidden a... He has a hidden hideout that you'll need to find. We have to find his hidden hideout. You know, they didn't have to say hidden hideout. I kind of assume that because uh, it's a hideout, it means it's hidden. But uh, And then we have Pandar. There's a white one and a black one. The time to be scared is when they come together to attack. Stand by for a powerful tag team. Then we have Shark. Where do you stand? This narrow-minded monster uses a time machine to warp around the room. Is any place safe? Truly, is any place safe, you guys? You know, our... last long enough, he'll be gone. Or will he? And then we have Max. Every time you get, every time you hit him, he gets bigger. How to defeat him is up to you. While you're planning your next move, watch what he's throwing. And then we have Gaz, the motorcycle monster. When his horn is, is fired on, he'll go berserk. Use some quick dodging, or you'll get flamed out. And then we have Bopper. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult for me to read, I think. Um, it says, this guy moves around like gas, but don't look for him to fire. Watch his bike. Better look for a fire extinguisher. 
every time you hit him, he gets bigger. What is that about? What kind of demon could this possibly be based off of? <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next page. Wow, okay, next we have Dragon Warrior. I am not familiar with this game. But, take a look at this, at this painting illustration. Yeah, the art is actually very, very, very epic. Oh, it's Dragon Quest. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so you guys, this is actually the US version of Dragon Quest. So you can see the really, really cool art that they have here. It says, prepare yourself. Okay, you guys, you better prepare yourselves. A story of unprecedented depth is about to unfold before you. The first game in the Dragon Warrior series is arriving. Long, long ago, it is said dragons and men lived in harmony. In those ages, dragons and men alike trained themselves in the art of magic. But this magic also served as a catalyst for the growth of evil. One such soul, a dragon from Charlock, would blacken the pages of history and change the world for all time. Oh no. For all time. And they were right. It did change the world for all time. Because we still have uh, Dragon Quest going on to this day. <laughs> so it definitely changed the world for all time. Okay, I'm going to read this little blurb down here as well. <laughs> Experience the birth of a new era in role-playing adventure. The introduction of Dragon Warrior represents more than just the release of a new game. This marks the beginning of a new and different direction for NES games. A few other RPGs have preceded this release, but none comes close to being part of this momental a game series. As Dragon Warrior, in Japan, this is the game that launched three sequels and is unmatched in popularity. By devoting a larger percentage of game back memory to more game to game depth, gameplay has evolved into much more complex and rewarding adventures. In addition, mere finger speed and sweat are no match for the challenges, which lie in wait for every player. Now, more than ever before, an era of deductive reasoning is challenging us all to excel, young and old, male and female. Your NES is coming of age. Look to Nintendo Power to provide you with the continuous stream of tips and clues you'll need to revive any stalled attempt to defeat the Dragon Lord. We'll begin with an in-depth introduction in the July-August issue of Power. I would certainly be curious to try this game. I wonder what it's like. Oh, and now we have our little Howard and Nestor comics. Okay, I'm very excited about this. Let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, here we go. So we have Howard and Nestor. And it looks like Nestor has actually uh, crossed out his name there and wrote it in his own red marker. I'm not sure why. He just seems to be a, um, a bit of a rebel like that. So, <laughs> let's see here. Ninja Gaiden, the movie, oh my goodness. You must be the expert video consultant. We have some technical game questions for you. So it looks like Nestor is helping on the, um, the production of a Ninja Gaiden movie. Expert is my middle name. I know everything there is to know, just ask. This is Umberto Ria, the director and a great artist. Ah, Senor Nestor, welcome, welcome. You are to make this picture authentic as a real NES game. Come, you show Umberto. Where is the, the up one? In video game lingo, we call it a one-up, uh, sir. And you know, um, in my case, I call it a one-man. <laughs> so, I think they're both wrong. I think they're both of course, you see, Umberto 
seeks perfection, the movie must be exactly like the game. So here in Act 4, Scene 2, tell me, where is the up one? Right here at the beginning, the bridge. The one up. Also, this comic is very cool. It's like a little story, but it's also telling you where to find some secrets in the game. I like that. A really, really cute idea. Um, it says, are you sure? My integrity as an artist depends on this. I bet my Max on it. Oh my goodness, it, is he talking about his NES Max? Oh my god. NES Max reference. <laughs> This Max, he is your friend? Well, never mind. It is good. Now, is the stunt ninja ready? Stunt ninja? A-OK, -okay, boss. Lights, camera, action. Don't they know ninjas never wear bow ties? Nestor, you have to tell them. You have to tell them. That's why you're here. Say cut. Stop the production. Okay, so he's fighting some birds and such. Says, he's past the mark. I have to stop him. Cut. You passed it, dummy. <laughs> wow, Nestor's being kind of a toxic backseater here. <laughs> he's being kind of a toxic backseater. You passed it, dummy. You can be a little bit nicer. And then he does a little flip and he says, one up. Only Umberto says cut. Throw him off my set. Wait, I'm telling you, he's no ninja. I just forgot where it was, that's all. Come, tell Umberto. How you know so much about up ones? Up ones? Oh, he didn't know. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Alright, so that was, that was one of the uh, Howard and Nestor comments. Let's move on to the next page. I hope you guys are still having fun and enjoying yourselves and that you're you're nice and relaxed, okay? <laughs> I hope you guys are still doing uh, uh, still feeling uh, feeling good. Oh, this is counselor's corner. <gasps> oh, so I'm not sure if this is where people uh, Specifically, I don't know if people specifically write in things, or maybe they're just taking com common questions from um, what people have sent in to the mail, the mail corner. Uh, but I'm very interested. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I need to zoom in on this for you guys. Good. I'm glad you all are still having a great time. Thank you guys for for letting me know and keeping. I just want y'all to be comfortable, okay? you guys are comfy. Thank you for letting me know. So let's take a look at this one close up again. I'm actually going to need this guide soon. It says, in the town of Maido, there is a woman who has a daughter that is ill. To help get her daughter, you must bring back the sacred water. Don't say it. in a cave north of Saria. To get into the cave, you must break a boulder with the hammer. So you have to bring the woman the sacred water. Very interesting. Now that's all. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, that was my fault. That was my fault for bringing it up in the first place. My apologies. <laughs> sorry, I meant to mute just then for adjusting myself in my chair, but I don't think I did. So I'm sorry for the chair noises. Um, great. Okay, so we must look at the gameplay counselor profiles. This is a very important part. <laughs> okay. Greg Louder. He became a video game counselor. 
such a cool, imagine this would be such an interesting job to have. Especially imagine if you're this guy's age, you know? You're this guy's age and your, your, your job is just to play video games. And Nintendo would probably even sell you, um, send you, you know, free games and stuff. Uh, so I think this would be a really cool job. Uh, so Greg likes skiing, softball, arcades, and flying. His highest game score is in the game 1943. Um, that's a shooter, right? And he has 1,626,400 points. Well, that is quite impressive. But his favorite NES game is Mega Man 2. Wow, interesting. This guy must have uh, a copy of Mega Man 2 ahead of time. Because I don't think it's been released yet, or maybe it's just released when this um when this issue came out. Yeah, it's a shoot 'em up. Um, so next we have Steve White, who became a counselor May sixteenth, nineteen eighty eight, just a short time after Greg did. So he loves water skiing, hiking, flying. And video games, of course. His highest game score is in Zanac. 12,200,000 points. His favorite NES game? Double Dragon. I would definitely trust Steve with all my uh, gaming advice needs. <laughs> and then we have Tom, who became a game counselor in May 1988. Uh, his hobbies are mathematics and cartooning. Oh, that's very, very nice. What a cute combination of hobbies, huh? Uh, his highest game store is in Gradius, which is a shoot 'em up. And he has 9 million points. And then we have a Shannon Taylor. Oh, a lady. That's really nice to see, isn't it? Uh, a lady as a game counselor. Cartooning, I would assume, is a, um... I would assume cartooning is a, you know, drawing cartoons. Okay. And now we have Shannon Taylor. So she became a counselor in August 25th. 1988. Yeah, I think I think math is a perfectly good hobby. I agree. Some people enjoy, uh, you know, academics and stuff in the same way that you know, learning Japanese could be a hobby. So, she likes camping, reading, and adventure games. Her highest game score is in oh, Wizards and Warriors. Wizards and Warriors. And she has 900, 935,000 points in that game. Quite impressive. And her favorite NES game is Mega Man. Great choice, Shannon. And then we have some tips for Mylon's Secret Castle as well. Somebody would like to know where to get the saw, so they have a guide for that. And then somebody else is hoping uh, to, um, oh, they're wondering about the stage select. Oh, so this person is looking to chat at the game, and Nintendo Power apparently endorses chatting. Uh, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Next time I attempt to cheat, uh, chat at a game, um, just know that I am fully backed uh, by Nintendo Power. Please and thank you. So there's instructions on how to write in to, um, on how to write into Nintendo Power. And 
Island. Um, we have a question about how to defeat Dark Nuts and Whiz Ropes. Two of the toughest types of enemies. Now, Whiz Ropes are very tough. Uh, as far as I remember, Whiz Ropes are the ones who... who they, they disappear when you get close to them. And they shoot projectiles from across the room. At least that's what they're like in, um, in the Game Boy games. Oh, it looks like they're a little bit different, but similar concept. Um, you can't attack them when you're facing them. Oh, and then more Legend of Zelda. Someone says, where is the blue ring in the second quest? So this is in regards to the second quest, i.e. I would imagine it's the second loop of the game. And then at Cobra Command, somebody wants to know how to get the first, get to the first base, and where are the anti-tank guns and homing missiles? Um, so, hopefully these people were able to get their questions answered. You know, imagine, imagine writing into Nintendo Power, and then it takes a month or, or a month or however long, uh, to get, for the mail to actually get to them. And then probably by the time they sort through the mail, it's, um... There's, there's quite a bit of time between then and when you first sent it in. I would imagine that a lot of people would have figured it out by that time. That's just a hunch, though. That's just a hunch. Alright. Let's go on to the next page. Oh, some cool graphics for Ninja Gaiden. Um, this is just more stuff about how to play the game. I think we're going to skip through this one. And we'll skip through this as well, but take a quick look. It's very, still very colorful and very nice looking. Oh my god, and more Ninja Gaiden guy. Well, this makes sense. Ninja Gaiden is a very, very difficult game. So they probably, there was probably a lot of demand to um, add in some detailed guides for Ninja Gaiden. True, third questions can help others stuck in the same place, yes. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's questions that they got more than once. Probably fairly common questions, so. Okay, we have more and more spoilers for the game. I don't know if I'd want the game spoiled this much, but it's certainly nice to have a guide. <gasps> oh, and now here we have a story. I'm excited for this. Oh my god, so somebody wrote a story. Hold on, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Okay, so this appears to be some fan fiction about Link. So this is called Friends by Robbie H. Lawton. So here we have the Fiction Writers Showcase. Um, it says, The entries flooded in from all over the country, swamping our panel of judges with hundreds of short stories. We enjoyed reading all of them, and a few really caught our imaginations. The winning entry came from Robbie Lawton of Abbeville, South, Car South Carolina, and is printed below. Second place went to Jeffrey Paris of Cromwell, Connecticut, and our third place story was written, written by Nam Tram of San Jose, California. Congratulations, Power Writers! What a cute competition! Okay, let's read the story, let's read the story. I think he's gonna get Isekai into Legend of Zelda. I do think that's what's about to happen. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog and Link were holding hands walking down the street. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't. This is, this is Nintendo, okay? Their, their, um, Nintendo Power readers are, are more on the rails than that, I would think. Jason, lunch is ready. Jason, oh my god, Jason, it's you. <laughs> Jason's one of my mods, you guys. It's, it's Jason in this story. Jason, lunch is ready. 
Jason heard his mother's voice. She sounded like she was in another world. Actually, to him, she was. He was inside the TV, with Link being shot out by the Moblins, and his mother was in the safe, cozy kitchen. Jason pulled his way out of the TV and stood for a moment, watching Link fight the Moblins alone. Jason sighed, put Zelda on safe, and went to the kitchen. Another peanut butter and jelly sandwich, he groaned. Why do parents assume all kids loved peanut butter and jelly? Shut up, peanut butter and jelly is awesome and you know it. <laughs> How's the game coming? Mom asked as she sat the ever-present sandwich in front of him. Okay, I guess. Me and Link. Link and I, corrected his mother. Link and I can't seem to find the entrance to Labyrinth 7, said Jason, biting into the sandwich. What was the clue for level 7? asked Mom. The old man said something about where fairies don't live. But Mom, that could be anywhere. There are lots of places where fairies don't live. Link can't figure it out either. We have thought and thought and thought about it, but we just can't come up with the answer. Jason stuffed half the sandwich into his mouth and started to get up from the table with his milk in his hand. Drink your milk at the table. Ah, uh, Mom, can't I drink it in my room? groaned Jason. No us. Drink it at the table. Jason sat back down and finished his milk. Can I go now? Link's waiting for me. Jason, Link is only an imaginary character. Sometimes the way you talk about him makes me think he's the boy next door. It's just a game, Jason. You shouldn't take this so seriously, Mom said. Yeah, I know, Mom. Jason got up from the table and returned to his room. Well, Mother don't know everything. Of course, Link was real. Jason talked to him every day. He turned Zelda on, and after a few seconds, he climbed inside with Link. This is a weird story. <laughs> Really, really weird story. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am. Jace, what do we have for lunch? No, never mind. Let me guess. Was it peanut butter and jelly? Link asked. How did you guess? Jason handed the remaining half of his sandwich to Link. Sorry, no milk today. Mom made me drink it at the table. That's alright, said Link, swallowing a mouthful of peanut butter and jelly. We can go to the lake and I'll get some water. I'm sorry because that was probably pretty loud. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't need to take you guys out of your uh, relaxed state. As they walked, they talked about how hard it was to find the seventh labyrinth. More intent on the conversation than where they were going, they took a wrong turn and ended up in the lost woods. They walked for over an hour without finding their way out. Jason, if I don't find some water soon, your mom's peanut butter is going to choke me, Link said. Let's go this way, Link. I don't think we've been through here. As they came out on the other side of the trees, they saw moblins. Further up, they discovered a path. That looks like where the fairy lives. She has water. Come on, Jace, let's make a run for it. They started to run towards the path. One of the moblins shot an arrow that whizzed by Jason's head. It came so close, he felt to make sure his hair was still connected to his head. You okay, Jace? 
Jason? Asked Link. Yeah, he replied, but that was close. Too close. They stepped into the path entrance and found the lake. But instead of finding the fairy, a moblin stood, ready to strike. Link quickly pulled out a knife. Oh my god, he has a knife! <laughs> and threw it at the moblin. Stumbling back, the moblin recovered and started coming towards them again. Jason pulled his knife and threw it. This time it did the trick. And the creature was history. Look, a blue jewel. Get it, Link. Link went over and picked it up. He pulled his bag off his back and put the jewel inside, setting the bag on the ground. He went to the lake to get some much-needed water. Jason, exhausted from all the walking, dropped down on the ground beside the backpack. After Link quenched his thirst, he came back and fell down next to him. They both lay there resting without speaking for a while. Each was lost in his own thoughts, trying to desperately figure out the riddle of the seventh labyrinth. They had six pieces of the Triforce. Only two more, and they could find Princess Zelda and Ganon. But first, they had, but first, they had to have the completed Triforce, and they couldn't do that without finding level seven. Frustrated, Link turned to Jason. I just can't figure it out. Chase, we've looked everywhere. I don't know what else to do. My mind is turning into jelly just thinking about it. Poor, poor dude, his mind's jelly. You know, peanut butter and jelly. Are they going to make out? I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past this story. It's kind of going a little bit off the rails. This is fan fiction after all. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so his mind's going to turn to jelly. Ah, oh, that's where we left off. Um. Where were we? Ah, here we go. You know, Link, Jason said sitting up. Sometimes, when I have a test at school that I have to study really hard for, my mind starts getting crazy uh, with all the answers running around inside. So I listen to music, and it helps me think more clearly. It helps me to think more clearly. My mom says I'm crazy, but it really does work. Um... It sort of relaxes you. We don't have my stereo out here with us, but we could hum or whistle or something. Hey, Jace, we do have a whistle, you know. We could use it, Link said, but we would have to watch out for the whirlwind every time we played it. What do you say? Let's try it. Link reached inside the backpack, pulling out the shiny whistle they had obtained in level 5. Link, since the whirlwind comes to the sound of the whistle, why don't I go to the other side of the lake and play the whistle for you, so you can try to concentrate on finding the labyrinth, instead of having to constantly step out of the whirlwind's way, Jason said. Okay. I'll try it first, then you can have a go at it if I come up blank. Link handed the whistle to Jason. He took it and walked to the other side of the lake. Ready, Link? Jason blew the whistle, then stepped back out of the whirlwind's path. As the whirlwind roared by, an amazing thing happened. The water in the lake slowly disappeared, right before their eyes. Neither Link nor Jason could take their eyes off the magnificent sight. When all the water had vanished, they found steps where the lake once settled. At first, both Jason and Link were too stunned to speak. Then, they, uh, I lost my spot. Then they both raised their eyes at the same moment and stared at each other. 
could this possibly be level seven? After all they had been through, the days of searching, could this be the, la the seventh labyrinth after all? They both yelled at the same moment, running towards each other. They hugged, they jumped, and hollered louder and louder. Well, Jason, should we go and find out if this is what we're looking for? asked Link. From far off, they heard a voice calling. Jason, it's time for supper. Wash your hands and come to eat. Jason listened to his mother's words and moaned. He turned to Link, started to say something, but the look on Link's face stopped him. Link was grinning. What are you smiling at? Jason demanded. Link shrugged and said, I was just wondering if we were going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for supper, too. Ah, <laughs> uh, Link, be serious. We just found level 7, and now I have to go. How can you think about sandwiches? Jason yelled. Because, Jason, whenever you come back, I'll be here waiting for you. We will discover the 7th level together. Without you and your idea about the music, I might have never found this labyrinth. I need you here to help me save Princess Zelda. And both of us need your mom's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to keep us going. Link grinned at Jason. Then he slapped him on the back. Go eat, and then we will discover this place together. Um, who knows what's waiting for us down there? We need all the strength that we can get. I think I'll take a nap until you get back. Jason looked at Link and sighed. I'll be back in a flash, so don't get too comfortable. Jason, he heard his mother calling again. He yelled over his shoulder. I'm coming, Mom. He turned back to Link and grinned. See you, Link. He pulled his, he pulled his way. He pulled his way himself out of the TV and back to his own room. Once he was out, he turned back to look at his friend. Link winked his eye at him. Link. <laughs> Link. Link winked his eye at him. Uh, then sat on the ground to wait. Jason put the game on pause and went to see what awaited him at the supper table. <laughs> Stop. These jokes are very inappropriate. Okay. You guys, I am in.
You guys are so goofy. <laughs> Tadaima, Tadaima. Okay, so, um, sorry for not giving you instructions, okay? I had to, uh, really use the bathroom, but, um, I hope you guys are enjoying the slumber party so far. Um, I walked outside of this room, and I, um, I realized just how uh, warm it is in here because <laughs> I got like a, a blast of cool air when I left the room. As long as we're doing magazine reading, I thought I'd, I should give you guys some, um, uh, some magazine noise ASMR service. turning noises, okay? Yeah, it's worth it to make a nice, uh, a nice quiet relaxing experience for you guys. I don't mind the heat. <laughs> I, um, and it's, it's a much better turnout than I expected, so I'm really happy that you guys are all here. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at the next page. Here's the pillow fort. Um, we'll have to build one later, I think. Or we can pretend we're under a pillow fort now. And I have a, I have a flashlight shining on the, the magazine, and we're just reading it together. That's, that's the ideal uh, experience, you know. It's just that we're, we're hanging out together, and we're just reading the magazine together. But you know, you guys are so so sleepy that, you guys are so so sleepy that you can't keep your eyes open long enough to read the magazine yourself. So I'm reading it to you. <laughs> okay. So I hope this, I hope this, um, evokes that sort of feeling. Yeah. That's my hope. <laughs> I know it's the afternoon, but you guys can always come back and listen to this later. And besides, it's nighttime for some people. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so. Ooh, so the top of 30 games we have next. Here's Ness again, our uh, Nestor again, our friend. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Oh, there's a code. So, okay, so it says, They say that the only thing that never changes is that everything is always changing. Surprisingly deep for the Nintendo Power Top 30. <laughs> You're laying in bed. Good, good. I hope. I hope if it's not nighttime for you, you guys can still have a chance to listen to this again at some point. Um, and maybe it'll help you relax when you need to sleep. Um, they say that the only thing that never changes is that everything is always changing. Well, once again, our top 30 survey proves it. Long-time top 10 entries and recent rookie releases mix it up one more time in this issue. Um, so the key is, any titles in pink are top 30, new to the top 30. The blue ones have jumped up on the poll. And the green ones have, um, stayed the course. They've maintained their popularity. Uh, this issue is, um, the 1989 May to June issue. So that's the one we're reading right now. I chose it because we're in the month of June now, so, you know, it's, it's like we've been transported back 33 years to the, to the, the May-June issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in first place we have Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, very, very popular game. Super Mario Bros. 2, another really popular one. And then the first Zelda. 
Um, and these have stayed at their place on the top 30. And then Contra as well has not moved. And then the new one is Track and Field 2 in spot number 5. You know, I wouldn't think Track and Field 2 is quite, um... Is that interesting enough to kind of warrant a... <laughs> A place in the top 30? Maybe, maybe. Um, then we have Blaster Master, um, which has jumped up on the pole. And then Metal Gear. Wow, people really like Metal Gear, huh? I had no idea it was so popular. Bionic Commando. Then Metroid uh, at number 9. And Rampage at 10. And then, and then we have a variety of ones uh, later. Yeah, the power pads would have the peripheral, so I'm sure people were interested in, in, uh, in that. Uh, for that. For, for that reason, just because it has a neat little gimmick. Rampage! Oh my god, it says time to- it, it says- uh, It says time to monkey around. Poor Mega Man 2, people don't know what they're missing. So now, um, this is very interesting, um, this says player's picks, and then there's pro's picks, and then there's dealer's picks. So I can imagine that players are the people, you know, the, the lay, the layman's, um, playing of the game. And then dealer picks would probably be people who perhaps work at game stores. And then pros picks. Oh, that's the game counselors. I see. Game counselors, like most people, enjoy incitement, danger, and the thrill of discovery. Link has it all. Um, and then I'm not sure. I imagine the dealers are people who work in game stores. <clears throat> and then we have um the Nintendo Power Critics. Now, I'm not sure what the Nintendo Power Critics is. I would assume that people, um... I would assume that it's people, um... Who write reviews of games, perhaps? So it appears they had many, many people uh, write in to try and be a, um, a critic. Uh, or... Oh, you know what it... Uh, hmm, I don't know. Is it related to the player's picks, maybe? I have no idea what this is. Let's read it. Let's read it. It says, Power players sent in lots of great reasons for wanting to be a Nintendo Power critic. Listed below are the names of our first team of 100 critics, selected from the thousands of entries we received. You know, this could use a bit more, um, spell proofing and grammar proofing, I think, because it, what it actually says is, um, from the thousand of entries we received. But I think what they mean to say is thousands of entries, I think. Uh, it says, we'll be listening closely to feedback from our circle of 100 for tips on how we can improve Nintendo power and give our power players more of what they want. I see, so it's, 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 it's feedback about the magazine itself. Interesting. So from Shane says, Nintendo Power is the best magazine, and I could make it better. I have great ideas that will make all those couch potatoes Nintendo fanatics. <laughs> and then from Thomas, even though I'm an adult, I'm also a kid at heart. Oh, me too, Thomas. <laughs> me too. I would make statements about Nintendo Power as both the adult and the kid that I am. And then, for Matt, I hear we're looking for a critic. Well, you found him with 14 games. Oh my god, he has 14 NES games. 14 games! <laughs> Sorry for my chair. With 14 NES games and an advantage, I really move. I've always had an opinion about everything, including the hospital I was born in. <laughs> what an a-hole! <laughs> This guy sounds like kind of, this guy doesn't, this guy kind of sounds like a little bit of a, <laughs> a 
a little bit of a jerk, huh? <laughs> Talking about criticizing the hospital he was born in and stuff. There's, there's no way you remember that kid. Um, I have a sense of humor and an educated mind. I would make a good critic. <laughs> oh, and then I almost forget about Billy up here. Um, it says, I consider myself a good video game player. And I always get straight A's in school. Great job, Billy. I feel myself to be a good critic. You need brains and talent. We certainly could all use a little bit of uh, Billy's spirit and hardworking um, nature. Now, could we? Good for him on his straight A's. <laughs> The twist is that it's Billy Mitchell. You know, I feel like, I feel like Matt is closer to a Billy Mitchell character, perhaps. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next page. Now, what is this? Oh, this is the Father's Day thing. Okay, so this is a, um, this is a lesson about Father's Day. So this is the um, Father's Day gift guide I think they were talking about. So they were talking earlier in uh, on the front cover about having a little section about um, not you can't buy your dad soap on a rope, okay? Your dad's not going to like soap on a rope. So here's all the things about dads that you need to know to buy your dad an excellent Father's Day gift. So yes, please uh, pay close attention. It says, from I Knew That Institute in Redmond, Washington, please welcome Professor Nestor. Here at the I Knew That Institute for the advanced study and training of parents, there is a saying, when in doubt, Check it out with Professor Nestor, who is never wrong about anything. I must say that this is true, so listen up. June 18th is Father's Day, the time of year when all of us are asking ourselves, what can I get Dad for Father's Day? In fact, a recent study shows that 98% of all kids ask themselves this question. And the answer is that 97% of them arrive at is to buy Dad a necktie. An independent study, however, has shown that less, that less than 0.0023% of the dad population actually wants a necktie for Father's Day. And only one dad in the entire country wants a bow tie. Just one. You could stop at five or six dads. Or just one. <laughs> Uh, this is just what I wanted, a tie with dinosaurs. Poor dad. When faced with these dismal statistics, most kids turn in last-minute desperation gifts from the local hardware store. But the fact is, 9 out of 10 dads surveyed do not want a portable mini deluxe digital hammer. I don't know, that seems like a cool gift. In recent tests, I have proven that dads are the most difficult humans to shop for. Twice as difficult as moms, and a whopping 113 times as difficult to shop for as your kid brother. Luckily, the young science of dadology has made leaps and bounds over these last few years. Our field researchers have observed their natural environment documented thousands of hours of behaviors and found some pretty remarkable facts about the secret lives of dads from all across America. Moreover, through a careful analysis of all this data, or data as we call it, <laughs> we are now able to select the perfect gift for any individual dad using the facts about dad's guidelines, which no kid should be <laughs> without. <laughs> It's a dad joke, it's a dad joke. Okay, fact number one. Dads secretly want to be professional athletes. 
He doesn't have to cite his sources, okay? He's the primary source. He did the research. <laughs> Conclusion. You can either buy him a pro team, which might put a strain on your allowance, or you can get him the next best thing. Nintendo sports series game packs like ice hockey, Mike Tyson's punch out, or rad racer. Tecmo Bowl or John Elway's quarterback will score big with football fan dads, while bases loaded in Major League Baseball will be hits with baseball dads. For the all-around athletic parent who doesn't have time to train year-round for the Olympics, there is track and field too. World Games and world-class track meet. Fact 2. Dads secretly think smarter than their kids. Well, I don't know if that's much of a secret, is it? I feel like most dads probably are a little bit smarter than their kids, just by, based on having more life experience. But, um, conclusion, you can either buy him a necktie and prove him right, <laughs> or challenge this myth by giving him brain games like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Ooh, you know how I feel about Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, you guys. I love playing those kind of games. Because I'm very smart. <laughs> uh, fact number three. Dads secretly believe that they are party animals. Conclusion. Send him to New Orleans Mardi Gras. Or surprise him with anticipation. The ultimate party game from Nintendo. I'm not a dad, no. I'm a spider mama. Now go clean your room. <laughs> now go clean your room. Okay. Fact 5. Dads love solving problems. Ever notice how they tinker endlessly with the car? Conclusion. Get him a new Porsche. Or, if you want to give him real problems to solve, try Othello. Ooh, I do love Othello. You know, I would recommend, rather than getting the, um, Rather than giving your dad, um, the Othello NES game, just get him a nice Othello set. I think that would be a really, really lovely gift. A really lovely gift to have. To give to your dad, anyway. Oh! Oh, man! It's not a numerical order. I don't like that. <laughs> Sorry. Although I do have one final fact to pass on. My studies show that dads want to have fun, just like kids. Sure, they're not as good as it. So maybe the best present of all would be to just spend some time with your dad. Oh my god. Stupid articles kind of make you cry. I love my dad. <laughs> dads are awesome. <laughs> Aww, that's really sweet, Santa. Oh my god, classified information, more game tips, we don't, we don't need to know about this. You made me miss my late dad and I'm tearing a bit too. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, but it's, it's a very sweet sentiment. I think I agree with that sentiment. Watching Coco 13 looking very uncomfortable, I don't even know what Coco 13 is. <laughs> Spending time with your dad is the most powerful Nintendo of all. Yes. <laughs> no, we're not. Al we're not allowed to know about these tips, so we're gonna skip them. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Top secret. Top secret. Oh no, they're top secret. Oh, what is this now? Video 
shorts. Now what are video shorts? Mmm. Well, let's see. Oh yeah, we can read this Zelda 2 tip. It says, Odd apparition. We've discovered a few odd goings on in the palaces and towns of Hyrule. Link can not only go onto the roof of some of the palaces, but he also seems to be able to transport himself from one palace or town to another. Wow. To perform this feat, Link must have the fairy's belt and the glove. In any palace that has an area where blocks fall from the ceiling, first, let all of the blocks fall so they create a solid wall. Next, climb to the top of the wall by breaking away some of the blocks to form steps. Once on top, activate the fairy spell, then press the A button and Link will transform into a fairy. <gasps> oh, press left or right on the control pad and Link will land on top of the palace. Oh my god, it's these are top secret. This is actually uh, game breaking tips. These are top, top, top secret. We mustn't read any further. Alright, I'm not going to read all of the video shorts, but we will read a little bit about um, Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. So, that wascally rabbit is coming home to your NES in the craziest quest yet. Bugs is out to rescue his beloved honey bunny. <laughs> <laughs> on hand to try and stop him are some of your other all-time favorites including Daffy Duck, Sylvester the Cat, Wile E. Coyote, and Yosemite Sam Guide bugs through the secret passages, up treacherous stairways, and through long and winding pipes Help him grab the boxing glove and send it flying at one of the cartoon cronies Push crates and other assorted heavy objects off ledges on and, and onto Buck's pursuers. The game starts out nice and easy, but you'll need quick reflexes and fast thinking to get through all 60 rooms of the castle. Wow, that's a lot. If Bugs gets caught and uses up all his lives, there's a password feature that's as good as 24 karat gold. The superb graphics help to capture all of the authentic wacky floor of the Great Warner cartoons. Flavor of the Great Warner cartoons. Fun stuff, Doc. Alright. There's Fist of the North Star, Hot Street Cop, Athletic World, and Kung Fu Heroes. Oh, there's so many. Yamagon Monster Party, Adventure of Lolo, Lolo, and Hyde Light. We're not gonna read through all Oh, the player's poll contest. So this is fascinating. Remember when magazines used to have contests like this? So, um, we have enter now for a chance to win these prizes. Player's poll contest. The first grand prize winner receives a mountain bicycle with a helmet. Now that's a great prize. 15 second prize winners win an autograph bet WrestleMania game pack. That is unironically a really, really, really pog prize. <laughs> <laughs> and Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second here. Who is. Who is Al Colgan? <laughs> Who is Al Colgan? <laughs> Who is that man? Who is he? Who is Al? <laughs> you can have it autographed by the Al Colgan. Wow, there's a lot of typos in this issue of Nintendo Power. I know Hulk Hogan. Anyway, that's a way better prize than the first prize. Andre uh, the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and Randy Savage. 
cottage have each side five cartridges. You could win one. Wow. Oh my god, that's a really good prize. Um, and 53rd prize winners will get the exclusive Nintendo Power jersey. Oh my god, what I wouldn't give for one of those. My original wrestler, Hal Culkin, did not steal. <laughs> LJ, I could only get the rights for Al Culkin. <laughs> um, and then, let's see what the poll is. Oh, so this is just to give some feedback about the magazine. Let's take the poll. Yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> Alright, you guys. Of the game reviews listed below, which two did you enjoy the most? Please list two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Bayou Billy, Cobra Triangle, Life Force, Ninja Gaiden, Faxanadu, Uncle Faster's Quest, Clash of Demon Head, Dragon Warrior. Four and five, so that's Life Force and Ninja Gaiden. No, it's not a Capri Sun, it's just my water bottle it makes a silly sound. <laughs> Life Force and Faster Quest, I think, I think Life Force and Ninja Gaiden are really good as well. 1 in 5, THP Ninja Turtles and Ninja Gaiden. Great choices. Okay, you guys, how satisfied you are you with Nintendo Power Magazine? Are you 1, very satisfied, 2, somewhat satisfied, or 3, not satisfied. You're very satisfied. Okay. Okay, follow up question. Follow up. How satisfied are you with my Nintendo Power ASMR stream? One, very satisfied. <laughs> Two, somewhat satisfied. Or three, not satisfied. Come on, you guys. <laughs> Extremely satisfied. Okay, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Okay, now we have... How old are you? <laughs> How old are you? Under six? Six to eleven? <laughs> Twelve to fourteen? You guys don't have to answer this. <laughs> no, don't tox your ages. 4, 15 to 17. 5, 18 to 24. Or 6, 25 and older. I have a feeling many, many of us are going to be 6. <laughs> Alright, and then, uh, are you a male? 1. Or female? 2. You guys don't have to say this either, don't worry. <laughs> don't actually give, don't actually dox, dox your age if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't so much because it's just a range, but, um. Oh my god, we won't be able to do this, I don't think. But it says. says, um, use the list of game titles 1 to 112 on the next page to answer the following questions. A two game which, which you like to most see in a reviewed in a future issue of Nintendo Power. What three games are you planning on purchasing next? And then your five favorite games in order of preference. So you have to put your answers there. <clears throat> oh, you can get back orders of it. See, so you can get the March and April issue. Um, oh, nice. This is really nice. You can do back orders of the previous games. All right. Or the previous issues, rather. All right, let's go on to the next page. Now, this is no doubt going to be the list of games. Here. Um, 
and we have a list of winners. And then, um, I love doxing myself on the internet. You guys, I'm just kidding. You don't actually have to say, you don't actually have to say what your age and gender is. We're just reading the survey. I'm in no way asking you guys to actually tell me how old you are or any details about yourselves. I'm just happy. I'm just happy you guys are here, okay? Um, so it says, official rules are, all you have to mail it to Nintendo Power, and then it's a random drawing, and then it's not open to, um, it's not open to employees from Nintendo of America. And it's void wherever prohibited by law. Okay, so just a little disclaimer. Ooh, a whole new world. The world of Nintendo. So, it says, wouldn't it be great if you could go into an awesome looking store? That was virtually an entire world of Nintendo. Imagine being in a world where you could eat, drink, sleep, and wear Nintendo. Well, you don't have to leave it to your imagination anymore. Before long, power players across the land will be able to shop for Nintendo Entertainment Systems, the NES Advantage, and NES Max. Nintendo and licensed game licensing game packs, Nintendo approved accessories, as well as a variety of exciting products all in one place. You'll find these items. <laughs> You'll find these items <clears throat> in the world of Nintendo, which refers to store departments specifically devoted for Nintendo and approved products. World of Nintendo boutiques will be popping up all over the country and will be easily recognized because of their impressive black and red high-tech look. You'll find products that feature many Nintendo logos, including Nintendo Power, and include t-shirts, sweatshirts, and other clothing, mugs, keychains, kites, suspenders, game pack carrying cases, sheets, pajamas, underwear, sleeping bags, backpacks, stickers, <laughs> caps, lunchboxes, stuffed toys, towels, posters, and much, much more. <laughs> uh, all of the items in the world of Nintendo will be Nintendo approved and carry either the official Nintendo seal of quality or be licensed by Nintendo of America Inc. to assure consumers that they are getting the real thing. Many of the world of Nintendo stores will feature displays which will let you preview games before you buy. This will be a big help in making those critical game decisions. Ooh, movie reviews. Oh, okay, let's let's read about Gogo 13 since somebody mentioned that earlier. Okay, so it says negotiating with a U.S. publisher to produce a regular monthly comic book based on the adventures of Duke Togo, alias Gogo 13. If all goes well, Vic Tokai, which also produced Clash at Demon Head, is hoping for a release date in a com for the comic book. Duke Togo is the title character in the adventure game back by Vic Tokai, Gogo 13. If all goes well, Oops, wrong spot. <laughs> at present time, a part-time secret agent, Gogol 13, is by trade a professional assassin for hire. Though relatively new to Americans, power players may be surprised to learn Duke Togo is the creation of Takao Saito, Japan's premier gekikaka, or graphic novelist. And over the last 17 years, more than 70 million issues of Saito's 80-volume graphic novel series have been sold. You may find a few in bookstores that have been translated for American readers. Fascinating. Considering the content of Coco 13, this is kind of funny. What is the content? What kind of content does it have? Is it bad? Is it yabai? 
Oh no. You guys don't talk about that in <laughs> Don't talk about it in Nintendo Power, guys. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Um That's quite the that's quite the subject matter. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the next page. Wait, who is this? <laughs> So this is like a, a real person. Uh, it's a celebrity profile. Holly Robinson. <laughs> so let's see. Um, she was in 21 Jump Street. Um, she apparently is a Nintendo fanatic. Uh, she started playing Nintendo two years ago when she first began working on the show. When she moved to Vancouver, Canada, where 21 Jump Street is filmed, she wanted to get her 12-year-old brother, Tommy, to come visit. So she bought him a, N a Nintendo. Oh, Gumshoe is her all-time favorite game, but it's so hard. I haven't been able to save Jennifer. I don't even know what she looks like. Often, Holly is so absorbed in the game that she pauses it right before she goes to sleep at night, but then gets up in time to play it before a day of filming. Oh, oh. Believe it or not, her workday often starts as early as 5.30. That's quite early, isn't it? Oh, she also sings the title song for 21 Jump Street. Uh, in addition to several ballads by the young actress singer, expect to hear a lot of good dance music. But when she's not in the studio, working on an album, you might just hear her humming the tune to The Legend of Zelda. Well, that's a fun story. Oh. Now what is this? Oh, this is cool. Okay, another contest. So this is uh, the ultimate video game, Lock Arms. So this is, uh, it was a contest to design a video game. So it says, with this stunning entry of Lock Arm for the Invent the Ultimate Video Game uh, contest, Jeffrey Scott Gamble of Aurora, Colorado, blew her socks off and took a well-deserved first place at the finals in Washington, D.C. reigns in the future world of Candelia, a piece maintained by the awesome power of the Lockarm Sword. An heirloom of the royal house, the sword is hidden from all but the family. That is, until Eric and Derek, <laughs> twin sons of King Ronan IV, and his wife, grow up, and the secret of the Lockarm Sword is revealed to Zorndolf, a mysterious wizard. Um, suddenly, the sky darkens. Aliens appear from a fifth dimensional universe, and Derek is magically hurled across the breadth of Candelia. There, thieves steal the power rings of the lock arm sword, dramatically reducing its power. It's up to Derek to cross the trackless wastes, the android inhabited cities, the coolish lands between, and restore the lock arm sword to the pedestal and save the world. That is pretty cool. That sounds like a cool game. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Oops. All right, let's take a look. No, no. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so he did some really, really cool illustrations. He did some really cool illustrations and uh, drew a bunch of characters for the different stages. Looks like you put a lot, a lot of time into this. Wow, I love that. I hope they make, I, they should make this game. Oh my gosh. And look, look at these characters. In his proposal, Scott specified characters, stages of the game, controller actions, and of course, the exciting story. Although there are no plans to make Lockarm into an actual video game for the NES, Scott's great imagination and superb artwork rank with the best efforts of professional designers. And who knows? At 15 years old, Scott might just become that. that. The mobster tank guy? Yeah, Boss the Goon. He looks so cool. This, These are really cool designs. Oh, I love this. 
Lots of effort. Great job. Great job. Uh, what's his name? Good. Great job, Jeffrey. This is so cute. This whole, this whole, like, this whole magazine is just, like, warming my heart. Oops, I forgot to do the sounds. Um, and then we have Video Spotlight. I'm not sure what this is. Power Players. So this is people bragging about being really good at video games, perhaps. Maybe. <clears throat> I consider myself a power player. Great job, Jeremy. <laughs> he became a comic book artist. Oh my god, the kid's writing into Nintendo Power. Really, really, really going on to do good things. Good, crazy things. So he solved Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, in a week and a day. This is just one of my many accomplishments. I've solved Super Mario Brothers, Jackal, Legend of Zelda's, Jaws, Renegade, Legend of Kage, Ikari Warriors, and Goonies 2. I have also beat Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! And finished Metroid and Kid Icarus six times. I have also reached the end of Russian Attack and Castlevania. Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link is my favorite game. It was very challenging and fun. It was my ambition to solve it in record time, and I did it. Later, I solved it in an hour and 30, 40 minutes without continuing. I plan on getting Super Mario Bros. 2 and Castlevania Simon's Quest soon. Um, my best tip for Zelda 2 is to get the hammer in Spectacle Rock. Meet Baku, a villager in the woods north of the river. To get a note to cross the river near Zarya. Keep on fighting to get the hammer. It opens up all new roads. Do you think he's lying? <laughs> Do you think he's lying? I wonder if he's telling the truth, you guys. Those are quite the claims. Quite the claims indeed. Well, good job to you, Jeremy, from Tarpon Springs, Florida. Oh, and have we, here we have the NES Achievers, which is just, um, people saying their high scores in different games. <laughs> so, oh, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Finished, finished, finished. Well, they all finished the game. Amazing. So, you have to, for, to do this, you have to take a photo of your screen. Do they have instructions on how to do that? I feel like at one point they gave instructions on how to actually um, take the photo, but you take a photo of your TV screen <laughs> and um, you just send it into them and then they put your name in the Nintendo Power Magazine. Pretty cool. But it says, sorry, photos submitted to Nintendo Power cannot be returned. So this is Packwatch. So this is um, some of the future games that are coming out. Uh, including the Three Stooges, <laughs> as well as Magic Johnson's Fast Breaks. Lots of basketball games, lots of basketball games. And Stealth ATF. Um, then there's Infiltrator, which is... I don't know what that is. I hope you guys couldn't hear... Um, I hope you guys couldn't hear my stomach just now. <laughs> Um, so it's showing these different games, but here's the really interesting part. We have some per new peripherals coming out. So, power to the people. Get ready for the high-tech high tech hip. The power glove. Here's a little more info on this new dimension in video gameplay control. You wear Mattel's power glove as you would a regular glove and feel like you're actually driving a race car or clench your fist and box your video opponent. The power glove also utilizes control buttons on the wrist. 
So far, the series of game packs especially designed for use with the power gloves include Manipulator, Maseball, and Glove Pilot. Still scheduled for early 90. More details to come. Okay, here's some asthma service for you guys, okay? I love the power glove. <laughs> it's so bad. I can't wait for that to come out next year, yeah. I agree. I'm so hyped for next year when I can when I can buy the power glove. And here's some terrible looking photos of how to play it. <laughs> or how to use it. And then the U Force. So we have another soon-to-be-released controller that allows new dimensions in gameplay involvement, the U-Force by Broderbund. U-Force is a controller, um, a controller which senses the movements of your body and hands and allows you to control the on-screen actions of your movements. For the beginning power player, there are accessories like the grips and T-Bar, which act like training wheels holding your hands in place to help perfect game help perfect gameplay. U-Force is compatible with most Nintendo game packs. Be on the lookout for games that will take special advantage of the U-Force controller. The suggested price is $69.95 and you can look for a national release toward the end of summer. How much they cost nowadays? I think they're quite expensive. And now we have the Game Boy! Wow! Um, yeah, that's in, that's in late 80s money, so I wonder how much that is today. Nowadays, with inflation. Have you ever secretly dreamed? Secretly. Only secretly. You can't dream that in out loud because people are going to make fun of you. But it says, have you ever secretly dreamed? NES in your pocket so that you could play it wherever you go. So have we. Well, our dreams are about to come true as Nintendo will soon introduce Game Boy. It is a portable game system that is about the size of a Walkman and uses interchangeable game packs. Titles already announced are Super Mario Land, Alleyway, There's an incredible network feature that allows you to hook two Game Boys together. You'll get an all new type of two player com competition as you each view the action on your own screen. Game Boy will also feature built in gameplay controls and personal earphones that transmit stereo sound. Scheduled for late summer. Hot. Very hot. <laughs> Why do they keep saying hot? So that's some up-and-coming stuff uh, in the world of Nintendo. Um, so what is this gossip? Oh, so games that might be coming out. We have, um, Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, we have. Oh, the greatest 18 holes of major championship golf. <gasps> Stereo sound just like the stream, exactly. On this side of your head. Or it can be on this side of your head. <laughs> How? I don't know. I don't imagine this, this sounds super realistic, but uh, when I was listening to my, um, when I was listening to my test recording, I thought it sounded pretty nice. Yeah. I don't know, it's called stereo sound, okay. <laughs> and here is a little advertisement about back issues. And team power tips. Oh, oh, this is like multi-level marketing. Subscribe to Nintendo Power, I guess. When your friend signs the card below, 
he earns his bronze team power pin. Plus, he saves six dollars off the regular cover price. And at the same time, we send you a big, free team powerful color poster up for your wall. It's full of incredible tips that you can't get anywhere else. A bronze single win pin is for new subscribers. Oh my goodness, wings for a friend. Let's take a look at that pin, shall we? Now that is a really nice pin. Great job, dude. Oh, and here are the people who preserve this lovely magazine for us. Retromags.com. Preserving classic magazines. Very, very kind of them. Thank you so much, Retromags.com. And this here says, Seal your future. Orb. <laughs> Seal your future. The Nintendo Quality Seal makes it crystal clear that your NES game packs and accessories are backed by Nintendo. Without the seal, it's not Nintendo. The Norb. The Nintendo Orb. <laughs> Norb is the new meme. I'll hail the Norb. Hold on, let me get let me get myself sorted out here. There we go. Now I'm in the middle. Oh yeah, did you like the room? You guys, you know, I searched really, really, really hard um, to find a a nice room to use. only one issue and we um and we were going for three and a half hours just off one issue of nintendo power so if you guys liked the uh i'm not sure if you liked the aspect of it being um reading the fact that i was reading nintendo power or you liked the asmr aspect uh, but either way either way i thought it was a lot of fun and i can definitely do more of it uh in the future i'll try and
if you don't own it, uh, y you can only use, you know, ROMs if you own the official game, so in a similar fashion, I uh, definitely own every single issue of Nintendo Power, <laughs> and I'm therefore um, justified in, in reading these, yeah. <laughs> No power was a pretty unique and on theme idea. I'm so glad. We can definitely do more of that in future. Gaming in the Clinton years. No, I'm not familiar with that. You're up for any ASMR. Awesome. Well, I will try some more Nintendo Power reading um, ASMR in the future. And I would also like to do other types of ASMR too, like um, roleplay and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not very good at roleplay because I'm silly. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a silly person, so it's difficult for me to be serious uh, in that type of situation, but I would like to give it a try because it seems interesting. Yeah, but definitely more Nintendo Power reading in the future. A comedy? Oh, it would definitely have to be part comedy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>